Hello and welcome to Change is Good. My name is Brian and in this video we'll be searching through 10 bankrupt rolls of half dollars. I don't know if these rolls have been searched, I just know they were brought in loose and wrapped at the bank. I call this a 10 bank roll challenge because I don't know if anyone's really gone through them or how well they went through them or anything. So we'll see if they left anything behind. Let's get started. Well, I'm on the first row and I already know they have not been searched. For those of you who know half dollars, you'll know what this is. This is an NIFC 1987 Philadelphia mintage of 2.89 million. This is a very low mintage coin. If anybody had searched this roll, they would have noticed that. So we're on the board with a really rare coin. And it looks like it might have been cleaned a little bit. That's okay. I can't tell for sure, but it looks like it. Nonetheless, a key date, first roll. Let's keep going. We're on the same roll. We have another find. We have a 1989 San Francisco proof. It's also been cleaned, it looks like. The luster's gone. The mirror finish is missing. So, still a find for the rolls. Now on to roll number two. We're on roll number five, and I have another find. This time, it's a 1987 Denver NIFC. Now, these are special and rare because they were only released in mint sets. Their mintage was around 2.89 million and they're really tough to find because the only way to get one is either buy the set or hope you find one in circulation that was broken out and spent. This is a little bit better shape than the last one. A little bit of toning on it. I don't see any cleaning marks on it, but man, that, I believe that's actually all the key dates I found this week of all of the half dollars. I found the 70D, the 87P, and the 87D all within like a three-day period, I think. Man, it's pretty awesome. We're on roll number five, and we have another find. This time, it's the 1987 Denver NIFC. These also had a mintage of 2.89 million. These are pretty scarce to find in circulation because they were only released in mint sets. So if you find one, you've got something cool. Um, this is a little bit better shape than the last one. I don't see any markings on this one. A little bit of toning, but it's in good shape. I believe this makes every single key date for half dollars found on this on this channel in the past two or three days. So that's pretty cool. Let's get back to the hunt. We're on roll number seven, and we have another find. This time it's another 87 Philadelphia NIFC. This one's got some damage on it. it you can see some chemical damage in front of his nose and mouth area there and some dents in the cheek and neck area. Not in the best condition, really just a slot filler on an album. It's about all it's going to be worth, but a find nonetheless. Let's get back to the hunt. We're on roll number eight and you guessed it. Another 87, this time at Denver. Let's get back to the roll. We're on the same roll. And there's another 87 Denver NIFC. I have never seen so many 87s in my life. We're still on the same roll, and I've got another find. I missed it by the edge. But check it out. we got some silver. A 40% 1968 Denver. Now, just for fun, I decided to put it under the scope. I'm going to show you what I see. If you get up close, try to hold it steady. You can see some notching, some splitting in the bottom serif of that S there. There we go. Right at the bottom serif of the S facing upwards, you can see a split. Right there. There's also a split there in the T. This is a double die. It's a minor one, but still double die on a silver coin. I'll take that every single day of the week. Let's get back to the hunt. We're still on the same roll, believe it or not. And this time we have a variety. Under the scope, I have a 1972 Philadelphia. And when I look at this coin, I look at the word states the most, because that's where the most of the markers are that I notice anyway. You'll notice how thick the lettering is. And check out the S's. This S, it's not sharp. It's actually got a big split right there in the bottom serif and a notch here at the top. This one here at the bottom also has a big split right there in the serif. 
This is DDR number one on Variety Vista. It's a cool variety to find. And now back to the hunt. We are still on the same roll. And this time we have a 1987 Philadelphia NIFC. Just to show you how scarce these are in circulation, I haven't found an 87 at all this year. It's been a long time. I did find an 87 proof, I think, but no Philadelphia or Denver. These things are pretty tough to find in circulation. Now off to roll number nine. We're on roll number nine. Can you guess what we found? Another 87, this time at Denver. It's a little bit off color. I think these are improperly stored somewhere. They almost look cleaned, but it's got good details. All right, one more roll to go. We're on roll number 10, and you guessed it. Another 87, this time at Philadelphia. This makes eight key dates found in this hunt out of 10 rolls. In total, before I did this hunt tonight, I have only found eight 87s ever. So I have now found eight in one hunt. That is ridiculous. All right, I'll be back with a recap. This is why I love hunting customer and bankrupt rolls. We had 11 finds out of 10 rolls. Eight of them were 1987 key date NIFCs, three Denvers and five Philadelphias. We had one colorized slash damaged 68D, 40% silver. That's also a DDO. A cleaned 89S proof and a 1972 Philadelphia DDR number one. I'd like to thank all of my subscribers. Thank you all so much for your support. If you enjoy this content and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It doesn't cost you anything. Thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next hunt.